All right. So welcome, everyone, to our second episode of Zen in Real Lives. This is just a good chance to talk to practitioners, people who practice meditation and Zen around the world. Um, today we have Chesre. Some of you know him if you join the Empty Gate Zen Center live streams or also you're part of the Quantum School of Zen Online Sangha. He practices with many groups, actually. Um, so, Chesare, first tell us where you are living, if people don't know. So, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm from Switzerland. From Switzerland, in, okay. Particularly from the southern part of Switzerland, because we, we are in the middle of Europe. So, we have the German side, the French side, and Italian side. That's where I'm from. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I don't even think I do that. <laughs> and um, how long have you been practicing Zen? Uh, Zen, to be honest, uh, from one year and one half a, a year. Oh, really? Okay. Because I practiced before with my with, with my martial arts school. Uh, they say that it was uh, Zen uh, meditation, Zen teaching, but uh, they never had a lineage or a specific I, instruction. So maybe that can lead us into like how you got into or interested in meditation, Zen, all of that stuff. <laughs> so, that's a long, uh, that's a great question with a long answer. So bear with Good. You. That's why we're doing these videos. <laughs> when I was uh, 15, yes, I think 15, I found this uh, small book of the 101 koan, the classic one with uh, really? every koan, also without, without commentary, just the koan. And uh, this, or you can say, uh, normal book, where, and they say, ah, this... Uh, Riddle from Japan, etc., etc. Okay, and I was with a friend, and uh, he looked at me and said, "What's it, what is uh, this all about?" Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and uh, we stuck with one, and was the famous one of uh, what some does a uh, uh, single hand do. Uh huh. Yeah, I think it's some translation says. Uh, what's the sound of one hand clapping yeah. in the Japanese? And uh, yeah, we were we were young. We would keep saying, uh, "Yeah, what is the sound? Come on, <laughs> tell me, tell me." <laughs> and to be honest, uh, I was not the least interest in uh, spirituality or uh, uh, anything else. Um, my this friend of mine then did some meditation, uh, you know, like the, uh, let's say, rich people meditation. So uh, <laughs> do a bit of this, a bit of that. And uh, for me, for years, I did not meditate. Hmm. I joined, but a, arshal, a martial arts school. So we did that. And sometimes the teacher said, you should meditate, but just to clean the day, not for uh, practice. So you you end your uh, 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 training session, you do a five minute meditation, just to say uh, how the day went. Okay. Mm -hmm. After some years, I think 10 years, I did a um, meditation uh, workshop in, in my school and they did uh, uh, you, I don't know if the translation is correct but the meditation where you uh, visualize uh, your skeleton becomes like uh, light so yeah. every bone etc etc and uh, it stuck with me I did uh, this one for a bit the next year uh, they saw this workshop was very appreciated and they did uh, another one <laughs> but uh, on the Anapa, uh, Anapanati Sutra 
So they change everything. I said uh, the the most important one, uh, the breathing meditation. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and it was uh, here that uh, I was interested, but uh, they keep changing how to do that. Hmm. And uh, every time they said, uh, don't worry, meditation comes later. Meditation is not important or, medi- or vi- vice versa. Meditation, it's too hard. It, you don't have to do that. And But uh, during that time, I was still uh, reading about Zen meditation, about Zen teachers. and But it was always a bit... Uh, uh, I, I can say difficult because uh, the teaching sometimes are very elaborate. <laughs> right. And uh, one time I was, uh, after a while, I was training daily before uh, going to work. I did some meditation. Not so much, I, I think uh, 15 minutes just to get a head start. And one day I was uh, reading a book, not about meditation, but but, but uh, about breath work. And they spoke about uh, the Master Sansang. Hmm. And they said, "Okay, who is this guy? Never heard of him. I heard of uh, many Zen teachers, uh, Suzuki Roshi, or other Zen teacher, Zen Japanese teacher from America. Never about uh, the Master Sansang." And they found um, dropping ashes on Buddha. After that, it changed my life because I said, I want to know more about Mm. this teaching, uh, this kind of teaching, because it was very simple, very uh, down to earth. And for the first time, it didn't seem like uh, I couldn't do that because uh, till now meditation was something to, we can say, elaborate, to uh, like go to, to university and they keep telling me, no, you are just doing middle school. So mm. it's okay. Don't You don't have to do that. So it was the book Dropping Ashes on the Buddha that you read that kind of made it. Yeah. And then after that, uh, I said, what's uh, another one? And they say, the Comp of, uh, of Zen. Mm. And uh, in this book, they say, uh, we are from the Kuan Yun School of Zen. I said, what is the Kuan Yun School of Zen? <laughs> so I keep in questioning, questioning, and I found uh, Empty Gate Zen Center live stream. One day in the YouTube, uh, uh, look, uh, we are live. I said, OK, nice. <laughs> you are were, you, were you already following Empty Gate Zen Center on YouTube, or oh, it just popped up in no, your feed? Random completely random and for one year i keep saying maybe i should enroll in the school i don't know maybe no maybe yes and during this time i went also to a zen temple for a retreat i keep i kept searching around uh, switzerland if there was a something but uh, after a while covid and uh, I couldn't go anywhere. But uh, meanwhile, I keep uh, looking at the live streams that uh, you do every thir- Thursday. Yes, mm-hmm. Thurs- Thursday. And uh, I said, OK, I'm, I'm thinking of joining. And after a while, I joined. So in the Quantum School of Zen, I'm from one year and a half really inside and uh, I started with I think 20 minutes meditation uh, and for me was uh, oh, my legs are hurting mm-hmm. yeah tell yeah. me uh, tell me about that yeah your practice schedule like on average what does it look like okay now I'm I must change something because I, I start a new work but <laughs> I did the uh, at first, uh, 30 minutes meditation in the morning and sometimes uh, in the evening. Uh, after uh, Kyolche, I decided to do more, 
and I started doing chanting also during the day, sometimes while driving or sometimes while working. And the sitting meditation was the same. Mm -hmm. After a while, I found the um, Barcelona Sangha that they have uh, a time zone like mine. So I uh, uh, I did uh, 108 bow with them and then uh, 40 minutes uh, sitting meditation. That's their morning practice? Yes. Yeah. In the evening, uh, it's uh, it changes uh, every time because sometimes I have something to do, sometimes I don't. So uh, for me, it was better doing everything in the morning. Always has been. And every time I say I don't do enough, and every teacher say, "No, you're you're doing uh, pretty much more than every, the average person." <laughs> right. This uh, every day. Sometimes in the weekend when I have family and uh, I do less or I skip a day, uh, I try to do something uh, during the day so to keep the practice alive and not just uh, sitting and uh, my cu current focus is uh, that the thing I do while sitting doing 24 hours a day mm -hmm. yeah that's a good I'm still thing. <laughs> in the work to do that <laughs> right 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 yeah I think that's important I always talk about how daily practice is important but the reason why it's important it reminds us that when we get off the cushion, the meditation cushion, that we continue the practice throughout the day. Because there's so many people who have that disconnection, right? There's this practice over here, then they have their life. So that's the advantage of having a daily practice. So yeah, like the teacher said, you were, you're doing good, you know, with your formal practice schedule, because it's really not as important as what you do from moment to moment to moment. Even people who do 20 minutes a day, it's a huge benefit, right? Because they it's a reminder, oh yeah, I can continue this mind, this meditation mind from moment to moment in my life. So that's that's great, great to hear. And it's interesting you said because you said because of a new job, it's changed a little bit. Maybe you yes, can talk about that. I will wake up earlier, so I will, will not join uh, the hmm. Barcelona Zen Center anymore. And uh, it's a new experience, so I will uh, uh, go to work uh, without uh, the car, but or just with uh, the public trans tra public transport. And uh, I have to see for everything now, so I will change a bit of things. Yeah, well, that's good. I mean, it's as you know, it's important to be flexible too, because people's life yeah. situations are changing. And I, yeah, so many people I talk to are like, oh, you know, the practice went out the window because I just started this new job or this is common too. I just have a, a newborn <laughs> keeping me up late at night. So it's like we always have to just adjust it uh, and be flexible. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's, that's great. Um, maybe you can share, I don't know if you have an example or maybe some life situation that uh, you felt that practice or Zen practice meditation has helped you. I think uh, it helped me uh, see much more right now my suffering and the other people's suffering. Mm. Uh, for example, before coming to the interview, I'm trying to book uh, the public transport for tomorrow and the app doesn't work <laughs> so i'm quite upset and uh, it took uh, a little bit and then uh, a voice in my head said uh, who, who is that it's upset where did this come from and sometimes it helps sometimes uh, it takes a, a bit of time to adjust uh, to to everything and uh, I think uh, I think I am full of uh, let's say suffering uh, anger uh, frustration uh, because of my karma because of 
many things uh, that happen uh, before and after mm-hmm. and uh, the things that helps me it's trying to stay moment to moment to moment sometimes it's uh, very easy sometimes it's very hard sometimes i get it sometimes i don't get it but uh, every time in the morning i wake up i try to practice so uh, like uh, sometimes we say why do you eat every day and every more and the morning sometimes i say why i wake up mm-hmm. what's the meaning uh, because i want to do that uh, or because there is something uh, more something i cannot explain in words or feelings or something else but still something wakes me up and said okay now you go <laughs> you do some meditation Sometimes I don't want to. Sometimes I want to sleep. Sometimes uh, I do. I sleep and do that uh, later. But uh, to be, it's very strange. Now I have a new, new job, and I didn't say, okay, I know I wa- I must wake up at this hour to do, uh, to go to the job. I said I want to wake up earlier so I can practice. Hmm. And. Uh, it was not because I said, ah, if I practice this at uh, this morning, then I do this, 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 this. I, I arrived there. I just said, I want to practice. And it was the most sincere I uh, told uh, I, I, I had uh, for that. And uh, yeah, part of me said, yeah, it will be hard. And then the other one said, OK, let's do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's a good, like very important point that you're making too about practice. Just first of all, being honest, right? Sometimes you feel like doing it. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's difficult because a lot of people are, I think, fooling themselves too. Like, oh, you know, they're making it some, they have some idea in their head of how they want it to be and trying to pretend that's how it is (laughs) rather than seeing the truth. It's very important and just being sincere. And also what I'm hearing too, when you're talking is like your intuition's always knocking on the door, do it. Your mind's like, I don't want to do it. (laughs) I just want to sleep. To be honest, I started doing that uh, when uh, I started doing martial arts Mm -hmm. because uh, my teacher did uh, a lot of standing meditation Mm -hmm. with many postures, et cetera, et cetera. And they, he, him and his teacher also told, uh, always told us you have to do that every day. Maybe after work, uh, you don't have to sit down and look at television, etc. And I did that every morning when people, all my colleagues, all my uh, fellow students were asleep. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, let's say at uh, six o'clock, I was in a small room because I couldn't uh, bother the other people. And uh, I did that for one hour, two hours. So when uh, they said, you are just to sit and meditate for me was, oh, it's easy. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe for people who were maybe just learning about meditation or Zen, because the reason why I'm going to ask you this, is because you always make comments this in the live stream about books. Like people say, what what books should I read? <laughs> so maybe you could tell us uh, maybe a couple books, two or three that helped you either in the beginning or for inspiration. Okay, yeah, because I am quite the book order now. <laughs> uh, so if someone... Uh, the problem with books, uh, and uh, I see it uh, clearly now, for me was uh, every time I read, uh, I give. Uh, I have to understand that that it's just uh, written words. It's not the real experience. Mm-hmm. So sometimes uh, it's very nice, a very nice book. It's, I, uh, uh, as you always say, uh, it's nice. It, it gives you a bit of fuel. Uh, a bit uh, a little spark but uh, you have to place the wood uh, and uh, some uh, uh, fire starter so it, 
just a spark is not enough. Mm-hmm. And uh, for me, because uh, you have to understand uh, also who, who will see this video, you have to understand that uh, I never had a formal instruction. Mm-hmm. People just said, do that. Mm-hmm. And then let's see. And uh, some people were sincere with saying, do that and we will see. Some people were not sincere. So they say, they just meditate that. I don't care. Uh, other people said, just meditate because I care. But don't, uh, uh, or you can say, uh, go with all uh, this idea uh, I read in this book, etc., etc. But to be honest, the uh, beginner's mind from Suzuki Roshi was the first. Then I have uh, another one from uh, Teach Na- Nathan. Yeah, I, I always pr- pronounce his name wrong. Sorry. <laughs> oh no problem. I can put the uh, maybe the link to the book in the yeah. description. I don't know the English name. Uh, in Italian, it was uh, "Camminare con Buddha," and uh, it was very nice because he explained all the uh, my. How does the mind work? Mm-hmm. So every time you have your six senses, you have your uh, memory, which is a bit of a seed dep- uh, deposit, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, for me, uh, as I said before, the life-changing book was "Dropping Ashes on Buddha." Yeah, "Dropping Ashes on the Buddha." Cool. I'll put those links down in the description if people are interested in those. For me, most important is to fi- find a teacher that really cares about uh, his teaching. Mm-hmm. So not just uh, uh, some words, but, but uh, that cares that people understand and keep practicing and keep, uh, uh, I, I want to say going forward, uh, but I know it's a bit, uh, wrong to say going forward when there is no (laughs) no way to go forward (laughs) well i think you said it before very clearly about the spark you know like the books a teacher can help us give the spark maybe point us to a direction but eventually we have to actually do it (laughs) good well thank you for that so um maybe before we go you uh is there any maybe quote or short story you can share with us that can maybe give us a spark. <laughs> mm. The quote uh, I keep uh, telling myself, and sometimes when I practice, it's uh, when uh, I am going to paraphrase it. Mm-hmm. When uh, you are going to the, uh, when you are dying, where do you go? Since this uh, sentence. Uh, always brought me a fear cloud. So I say, I don't know. Sometimes uh, uh, I tell me the other uh, real great questions that nobody uh, tells, uh, nobody thinks about. Before uh, your parents were born, where, where, where were you? And then That's it. <laughs> so when when I fear of something uh, for the future, I think, yeah. But before your past, where were you? Where were you? Where were you? Right. It's a very good question. <laughs> but it's getting to the source of uh, source of our suffering too, which is very wonderful. Cesare, thank you so much for um, you. being here and being the second guest of the series. And if you are watching this, uh, please let us know in the comments what you think. If you have something to ask or tell Cesare, go ahead. <laughs> um, also, if you want to be part of this series, if you practice meditation, it uh, doesn't matter where you live, uh, let me know in the comments or you can email me at jason at jasonquinzen.com. All right, Cesare, thank you so much again. Thank you for your opportunity. Have a very clear day, and I'm sure I'll see you very soon. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.